All right. Welcome to the Consult ROI uh, podcast. I have Les Patterson here. Uh, he is a business mentor and a storyteller who empowers leaders to intentionally create their own story of greatness. Uh, Les has actually launched the Red Edge Mentoring, which I'll let you get into uh, what that does. He, he launched it back in 2016, correct? Correct. All right. And um, many, and, and I think this is a story that many entrepreneurs, including myself, actually can relate with that. Uh, many people told him that he was not going to make it. I mean, I even had family tell me I was never going to make it, that I needed to go get a real job. So definitely something we can relate to. And um, Les now confidently embraces his story of greatness uh, and leads others through the Red Edge Mastermind programs. He is a 24-year Army veteran, and he is Army, uh, or he has a fa- he's a father of three boys who are also all veterans, which is definitely not a thing that many people can say. So he also has two lovely daughters and he is a grandfather of two, which you'd never guess, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, he and his, uh, his wife, Elisa, have been married for over 31 years and they still act like they're teenagers. So um, it's, <laughs> we're going to be great about that, but uh I'll let you take it over, kind of get into what, uh, what is the story of greatness? Uh, what makes you tick? Thank you, uh, Cameron. Really, uh, it's an honor. We've, we've been trying to get together now for oh, well over a couple of years. And uh, so finally to, to make this happen and to be able to, to, be able to talk and, and to have a conversation about uh, what it does mean to create a story of greatness and what does it have to do with uh, ROI, particularly ROI in business? Mm-hmm. You know, and so this concept of creating a story of greatness has come out of my own journey of figuring out who I am. Uh, we get defined by the roles of our life. You know, for instance, uh, you and I both have the opportunity to be fathers. And uh, I remember when I was in your stage as a young father and lots of little kids and, uh, and the stresses of that, of paying bills and earning money and feeding kids and trying to spend time with, uh, with my wife and be involved in different things in life. Uh, I, I was a member of the military at, the, at that time. I was going to school and I was working and I was involved in my church and involved in community things and I had all these roles in my life and a dad, husband, father, uh, a soldier, you know, uh, a scoutmaster, I had all these different roles. And they, these roles will often define who we are. You know, I know sometimes someone will say, well, I'm just a you know, I'm just a part-time student, you know, or I'm, I am just a stay-at-home mom, or I am just a, you know, I never went to college. I'm just a production worker. Well, I think that's kind of engraved in a lot of us where we are forced to, we're always told to not brag and always be humble with everything. But in by forcing that humility, we in turn are almost tearing ourselves down. As Sometimes to, we are. Yeah. And, as, and granted, there, it's definitely a fine line, right? It's, it's not to be too humble to where you downplay you and your abilities as a person, um, but not to upplay it to the point where um, you're overly cocky, right? Or yeah. um, chauvinistic and shoving other people down. Right. Um, but I, uh, I, I wanted you to go into, and I, I, I know that, Really, the story of greatness is the core talking point, but I, I think it's just as important. And this is kind of why I kind of threw in that little point with it. You, you guys, again, have been married for 31 years and you still act like you're, you're still in love and teenagers and that, which is a hard thing to do for that. So how has, has having that positive and great of a, a relationship really helped you and your business to be successful? Having help 
healthy relationships uh, in all aspects of life is crucial in how it impacts other aspects of life. You know, so for instance, Cameron, we, you know, we'll, we'll hear things like about the work-life balance, uh, which is which is an unachievable. Um, it is. It's just unachievable because to try to get work-life balance. You know, it's like trying to be on a teeter-totter and everything to be perfectly equal. Uh, but we can strive to find harmony, finding a, harm, a, harm, a harmonious relationship between uh, our obligations and demands uh, in work, for instance, uh, at home with our family, in, uh, in our passions, our hobbies, our interests. We can strive for harmonious relationships. Well, the relationships that we have in each one of those areas directly impacts all the other areas. So when life is, say, it's challenging at work, if relationships are challenging there, it's going to have a direct impact to relationships at home. Not that it would, say, make it bad, but if, if, if I'm stressed every day at work, and I've been there, I've been in in jobs where every day I just felt stressed out, I felt felt beat up, and I I brought Fast some of that down. home. Well, it also goes vice versa. Um, when you have a healthy or a challenged relationship at home, that's going to impact your your productivity. It's going to impact your leadership. It's going to impact relationships at work. Um, I've been incredibly blessed to be married to an incredible person, uh, a beautiful woman who is one, she loves somebody way more than, than she loves me, which is I think one of the most powerful attributes of, of her character and she loves God first and foremost and because of that, she has been able to love me like God, like God loves me. And so in, in a journey, uh, we've been, our, our anniversary is February 17th. Uh, so from when we're recording this and just, just a little over a week. And uh, we'll be celebrating 32 years at that point that we've been married. And it's been, it's been a journey. Uh, there's been lots of joys and sunshine and happiness. And there's, there's also been lots of challenges, you know, during that time. And a lot of those challenges are because of choices and mistakes and demands, on, or, and plus demands on my time with, you know, trying to find that balance, which never happened. Um, but I have learned when, when I am very focused and very intentional in building uh, a relationship of love and of patience and of understanding of, of time, of um, striving to understand um, her love languages, you know, for instance, uh, striving to uh, really striving to serve. And, and uh, I, I, I don't really do a great job with it, but I keep striving to do a great job um and she's become she it well she not become she always has been she is my ultimate cheerleader she's my ultimate encourager and uh and so our love our relationship um with all of the challenges with all of the ups and downs and uh in fact you know this uh through coming up later in this year we'll actually be she and I will be joining together to uh, to teach uh, some some courses, uh, some some retreats on on striving, you know, finding healthy relationships, particularly for business leaders. How do we have how do we have those healthy relationships at home so that we can be healthier and stronger as a leader? <clears throat> those relationships, what she has brought to me. Um, has allowed me to flourish, has allowed me to get back up when I've fallen down, uh, has encouraged me to keep going when I, when 
I don't know if I can keep going. And so Cameron, that, that question is, it's really powerful. I'm honored that you asked that. And I'm honored that you, you see us as like the teenagers, so to speak. Uh, we do have a, a great love for each other. We are, excuse me, we're very, very happy together. And we're very happy even with all of the challenges. We're very happy even though we have to work hard at our relationship. Well, and this is something I have a lot of respect for you for, and, and I know a lot of other people respect you for, is the fact that you put your wife even above business and that you, that you are more than willing to interrupt any meeting or whatever else to make sure that she gets that personal attention and everything. Um, even if you're like, hey, can you just give me a minute? I just want to like, uh, say hi to her or goodbye or whatever the case may be. Um, and that's something that I think everybody needs to strive. I haven't always to. done that. I, I haven't always done that. Well, we're yeah. always improving, right? We're always <laughs> looking to, to better ourselves. And it's, it's uh, and I think that also touches on your other point of why it's so important not to focus on each other um, to get closer to each other. It's focusing on God or those certain principles and the principle of loving each other like um like a perfect example, whether that is God or Muhammad or whatever um, for you um, and your own, your own beliefs that, but through doing that and only working on improving yourself and trying to love others and emulate that love and care and so forth um, that you in turn do grow together. Because if you both are focused on that similar point, then naturally everything goes together. Um, you both are heading in the same direction. Right. Um, when you are focused on each other and it's linear, then you also give the chance for when um, there's contention and conflict that basically that magnet flips over and now you are polarizing. You're having that magnetic effect where you either attract really well or you polarize really well quickly um, but that can be extremely destructive when that flips and that's all it takes is one person to flip even for a second right but um, if we all focus on a similar target then it doesn't matter if that person flips or not because it has no effect on how your journey to towards perfection or bettering yourself um, and it allows each person to be imperfect yet still perfectly trying to be become better. Um, One thing I've I've really loved about uh, about Elisa, and it's something that I try to I, I, I try to emulate as well, um, and it's her ability to love the whole, meaning the whole of me, for instance, uh, the whole of our children. Uh, even though she knows the whole, <laughs> she, she knows all about the whole, you know, all the flaws, all the weaknesses, all the struggles, yet she still loves the whole. And, uh, and, and, and that's what, that's really is what love is all about. And, uh, and so what would you know, say to, to people that don't have that? Um, what would you say in the circumstances where their, their family unfortunately is not supportive they don't support the business they don't support them um, even say their spouse is very condescending or negative towards that what would your advice be in that that situation those are those are real situations uh, Cameron uh, and I have had opportunity to see that and actually work with uh, different business uh, owners, business leaders that are in that type of situation where they may not have that cheerleader encouraging type of support, uh, where there may even be a challenging just a personal relationship uh, with their spouse or their, their significant other. And I've seen the, the incredible impact that it makes on 
the other, you know, their, their ability to be able to, to lead themselves, to create their story of greatness and to, and to lead the strategy of their, of their company and how they serve their customers. Um, and so one of the things that I have found uh, that, well, a couple of things that I found to be effective is one is sometimes you have to remove or have a separate uh, or separation between business and a family. Uh, I, have, I have one of my clients that uh, has, uh, has absolute no contact with uh, or no discussions with his spouse where it comes to, to business, um, you know, and because that's what's healthy for their relationship. You know, uh, it's just there's a complete a complete separation there. Uh, another thing that can be really really helpful, and this is true in relationships of, of all kinds, is have that common purpose, that that common why. You know, what what is the core focus of the relationship? What's what's the vision of the relationship? And sometimes it can help to actually define that define what is our purpose as, as a couple, as, as a family. And it can be really incredible to actually sit down and help somebody develop that, what, what their purpose, their mission, their why is. Because when you have that, you start to find more commonalities. You start to find more things. Yeah, yeah we are more aligned on this area. And yes, there are some, there are some challenges. Uh, and it, that won't necessarily make those go away, but it will create the space where you can have healthier communications about them because you have this common um, focus. You have this common purpose. Um, well, that's, I think, crucial to communicate with all people, right? Is both A, finding commonality, and then B, finding what their triggers are. Um, and through both finding out what the commonality is, you find common ground, common interests, and you know kind of what to, to focus the conversations with. And then triggers like, hey, this is stuff that is, is a point of contention for them, that is a point of, of pain or grief or whatever else. So with this person, I know now to avoid these topics. And, it, and it's like when you're dating, right? It's, it's that dance um, where you are still trying to figure each other out. Yeah. And you can never please everyone. So this is something that's impractical to please everyone. But through at least focusing first on the commonality, um, that would determine what um, or where you can grow or build that relationship, whether in business, personal, dating, marriage, whatever. Correct. Um, so it, excellent points here. So getting back to the story of greatness, what is that to you? What does that mean? What is, um, and how do you instill that in others? The story of greatness uh, is a story of creating very intentionally creating who we want to be and then becoming by being. You know, for, for years, Cameron, um, I lived a story of, of whatever the opposite of greatness is. Um, I lived ugly truth. Um, I lived a story of, of not feeling worthy to be loved by God, by, by anybody, uh, by my parents growing up. Um, I, I created things that weren't true in, in my mind and in my thoughts. And so I, I was actually a teenager when I first started to recognize this and, and it's taken a lifetime to, to implement and, and to execute, but I, I made a promise uh, to, to myself that I could create a better story for myself. And I, I had no idea what it meant, but I knew I could create something. And, uh, and so I started working on that promise. 
which was just say, okay, I can see something myself that I actually like. Um, you know, for instance, for years, I, I saw physically, I just saw an ugly person. I saw myself literally as a physically ugly person. Um, I saw myself as an invisible person that I didn't really feel other people actually saw me. I know they saw me, but I didn't think they saw me. I didn't think they really saw who I was. And, uh, and so I, start, I lived up to that ugly truth that I was an ugly person, that I was an invisible person. Well, if I was going to change that, I had to, I had to create a person that wasn't ugly. I had to create a person that wasn't invisible. So I started seeing, well, one, initially I saw that other people saw me. Uh, there was a kid in high school in a very random moment, ironically, just a few weeks before he died, he saw me. He called me by name, the most popular kid in school, JJ, Jeff Jackson. He saw me. He called me by name. I had no idea he knew who I was. And a couple of weeks later, literally, he, he did. He passed away. He was sick with leukemia. He was the captain of the football team. He was, he was this good, strong, handsome-looking kid. I remember when I went to the viewing for his funeral, and his mother asked me if, I said, did you know Jeff? Or how did you know Jeff? And I remember what I answered, but I know what I thought. I said, well, no, he didn't know me, or I didn't know him but he knew me. And as I continued that, okay, well, if Jeff sees me, maybe, maybe my parents really do see me. Maybe my parents really do love me just as I am. Maybe my teachers see me. Maybe my friends really see me. Well, maybe, maybe a young lady could actually see me, a girl. You know, maybe I could be. And then I started to see, well, okay, I can be kind of good at something. I don't know what, but maybe I can. And then I just started finding and building on strengths and stepping forward in another level of confidence. And then I'd get knocked down or I'd trip and fall. But then I learned, okay, I can get back up. Oh, hey, I didn't know that. I didn't know I could get back up. I didn't know that I could screw up so bad that I just want to stay down but that I could get back up. And I saw, I saw other people that were broken that were, that I knew were broken. Like a high school English teacher who came to school every day drunk, lost his job. But I saw him keep getting back up. I saw my dad who kept getting back up and found recovery in life through Alcoholics Anonymous, found recovery in life through love, found recovery in life of making amends, found recovery in life because he started to see there was goodness. So I thought, well, if my dad is a broken man, if he can do it, well, then maybe I can do it too. And I just kept building on that and building on it, building on it. I still am a person that will make mistakes. I still am a person that will have imposter syndrome take over my thoughts. I'm still a person that uh, will sometimes feel invisible. But I made this promise I can create a better story. I made a promise I'll get back up every time I'll get back up. And I've made a promise that I stay present, I stay engaged. I am a person of greatness. That's a confident not an arrogant thing, it's a confident thing. Um, and as a person of greatness, as a person of beauty, of a person of wonder, a person of awesomeness, when I feel confident, I in turn are gonna help others that I, that I interact with. I'm gonna help them feel confident by having a conversation, by saying hello, by seeing somebody like, people saw me. Um, my quest is to be like JJ. I want to see the people that feel invisible. I, I want to see the, the leaders of businesses 
just like you and I, Cameron, who are who are out there doing their thing, but sometimes they feel they're just not enough. I promise you, friends, you are enough, and I see you. And yeah, there are, are things that you can learn. There are things you can do. There are hats that you can you can take off some of the many hats that you're wearing and focus on what you do best. And there's things that you can learn. But man, you are great just like you are. I think self-confidence is probably one of the hardest things to build, right? It, it, it um, is. It is. And kids that even I thought were popular, I think even back to grade school or whatever else it may be, um, knowing them now as adults, it's crazy how many of them didn't feel like they fit in. Yet in my world or from my perspective, they seemed like the most popular kids ever. And some of the kids that were popular um, and amazing, honestly, and at the time, it seemed like that's all that ever mattered and existed, right? Especially as a youth, you think that that's all that's going to matter because that's all you've ever known. Um, that's your really first experience into kind of adulthood. Um, and it's really sad to see that a lot of them, because of that, um, that culture and influence that they were in, uh, made and were involved in a lot of poor choices that then affected the rest of their life. Um, I know a few that became a father and a mom at, you know, 16 and, uh, or 15. And, and basically they're working in dead end jobs now. I know some of them that were able to finally work through that and work through it, but it didn't change the fact that there's, um, they have kids with somebody that they necessarily didn't have a lot of respect for that they weren't really meant to be with. And now they have that permanent life bond um, and the child is dragged between that, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember me personally, even, um, I, I mean, I'll be straight up and honestly, I was the kid that even nerds picked on. I was not well liked at all. Um, and um, the only reason that I really was able to get through that um, because I had no worth in myself whatsoever. Um, but I did see that through all the pain and struggles and conflict that I was in, um, that I was then able to relate and understand people that were going through other trials. To me, that it seemed relatively trivial at the time, but were still severe. They were still severe conflict and everything else, but the fact that I was able to personally relate to that person on that level allowed me to help those people more. Um, and that was the only thing, honestly, that I held on to for years. That was the only sense of self-worth that I had for a very long time um, was, well, I have no worth to myself. I don't value as a person or anything else. Nobody would care if I was gone, but if I can even help one or two people, that's enough to where my life has at least some meaning, some purpose, some sense. Um, and, and that's honestly what kept me going clear into, you know, young adult age. Um, and I think for every person, you have to find that one little bit of purpose, even if it's yep. minuscule or very minute, um, or whatever, it's just finding that just enough self-worth or self-purpose um, to see what you can contribute or what you can do to help other people. And through that servitude, you then build yourself up and build that confidence. And then as you get to see, because you're never going to have everybody, again, care about who you are or anything else. Um, uh, and you will still have people condescend you and you will and tear you down and that and if it's built upon always the opinion of others then that is like building your <laughs> not to get uh, tacky here but it's building your your house on the sand right uh, right and it'll just wash away the moment the storm happens and so building your the rocks 
and that or the stable foundation that you want to build your house on, I truly believe are um, the principles of what purpose and that whether it doesn't matter if you want to get religious or whatever else, um, it's just finding out what your value is. For some, it's like, what value does God see in me? Like he was cared infinitely enough to create me. But a lot of people also don't necessarily have that belief for say, um, because of the fact that they don't, they're like, well, if God exists, then why would he allow so much pain and suffering to exist? Um, and I have understood it later on and that, that I uh, pain and suffering is essential because otherwise it's, what we have is all there is and we don't have gratitude for what we have. It's just kind of ex, um, expectation. And I found that with all, it, it's kind of goes back to Newton's law with every, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Um, and I truly believe that. So every good thing has just as much of a negative thing and every, um, negative thing has just as much of a good. And that's why you can see such great, beautiful things rise out of such horrific conflict. That's right. You know, um, if we just took a little micro cosmic shot of life over the last uh, 12 months uh, as um, a worldwide pandemic has literally impacted every person, every family, every business, every community, literally worldwide. I mean, none of us have seen anything like that in our, you know, in our lifetime. Um, how we lead ourselves through that when jobs are lost, when loved ones are lost or loved ones are, are really sick, um, you know, I've, I've seen, um, you know, uh, loved ones, family members who've been very, very sick with, with COVID. Uh, fortunately, no uh, direct family members that have, that have passed away because of, but I've seen the hardships and um, we've seen the economic hardships, uh, economic hardships on, uh, on our business of Red Edge Mentoring and the impact that it's made there. If we are completely reliant upon external factors, uh, that encouragement from others, the, the wins, others celebrating our success, you know, the likes and the comments that we get on social media, if, if our value, if our story is all driven by those factors, well, when those factors disappear, or those factors change, then uh, it could be really, really challenging. It could be challenging to be resilient when we need to be resilient. It could be challenging to be courageous when we need to be courageous. It can be challenging to be a leader when we really need to be a leader. So that's why as, as, as I've developed, I guess, my strategy in life, which has direct impact to my strategy in business and how I help other business leaders, business owners uh, create their story and their strategy is that I need to operate on that foundation of, of being a person of greatness, uh, competently be a person of greatness, which doesn't mean I rock solid all the time but it means I know my purpose. I know my why. Um, I know my value, my worth as a person. Uh, a person, when we have a purpose in life, we will then find our worth in life. You know, we talk about self-worth. If, if we struggle with self-worth, well, let's go find our purpose. You know, let's, let's go find our why. You know, Simon Sinek teaches a concept of starting with why. Well, it works in business and it works in life. What's my why? What's my purpose? John Maxwell will amplify that, the purpose, understanding our purpose. 
so that we can then lead, so that we can then guide. We have to guide ourselves first if we're going to guide others. We got to walk through the storm so that others can follow us walking through the storm. You know, those that we love and those that we lead. Well, an interesting thing that I, I just thought of is to me, and you can put your thoughts in on this, is to me, purpose is servitude. Um, meaning that how you serve defines your purpose. Um, and to, to, to clarify that further, I, I would say that we all serve other people in some aspect or some way, right? Whether that is through our business and that providing service, um, that's literally service. That's the root word is serve to help, to, to guide others. And the only way that we can really grow our business is through serving um, by actually helping people and fulfilling a need for those people. The only way that we can um, build up our relationships, our marriage, our family or anything is through service, by serving them, by caring for them, fulfilling the need and building that that foundation. That's right. And so it's all service and work. Um, and it, as, as I, I've gotten older and older, the more I realized that that's, that's what gave me purpose, even in my hardest points and that whether, again, it, it doesn't matter if, if you believe the principles of religion or not, the core, the core elements of the, those beliefs are really do help. Um, and it's, I've, I've also found it interesting that whether it's Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, or anything else, they all seem, seem to have those core beliefs of helping and serving and caring for others and just being good people. And so for me, and that, that's why I've always tried to focus, if I'm having doubts of myself, um, I just realized that I have not been serving well that I need to serve more. And, it, and a lot of people, especially when you are in that mood is like, well, how is helping anyone going to help me when I can't even help myself? Um, but through helping others so that you do find that and it in turn does help you. That's right. It's, uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you, you, you move up one step by helping someone else and that raises you up a little bit so you can help more of yourself. And then it raises you up a little more, you help others, and then you help yourself a little more. Uh, the concept of, of filling our cup, uh, well, serving others is one of the ways of filling our cup. Now, if all we did was serve others, you know, for instance, uh, I, I work with a lot of uh, female uh, business owners and uh, one of the challenges that, uh, that they face that is, is a little bit more unique than a lot of us men face is they, um, us men, we can, we, can, we can separate a little more easily uh, the duties at work, you know, and we can separate away from our family duties a little bit easier. Well, uh, sometimes uh, women don't make that separation as easy, which is actually a really good thing. But sometimes they can serve, 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 serve so much that they drain um, their they drain their cup so much uh, because it's never being replenished because they're always giving, 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 serving, serving, serving. And so finding ways to fill our cup, finding ways to fill our cup of confidence, of love, of, of greatness, of nourishment, of you know, and how we do that, you know, coming, you know, uh, Cameron, your whole concept of, of creating an ROI. We, we think about that ROI actually means a return on investment. And, you know, and, and now in a dollars, dollars and cents, well, that makes sense. You put in a dollar in a way that is very intentional. It's going to generate a return that dollar investment will generate a return and well it could be the you know 0.001 percent in a savings account 
could be four or five percent in investment or 15, 25 percent in an investment. Or if you happen to get in on that one wild stock that went kind of crazy last week, maybe it gained 8,000 percent. Well, life leadership is the same way. Um, if we want to return on our leadership, if we want to truly have impact as a leader in our life, a leader in our role in our family, a leader in our role in our business, a leader in our role in our community or a nonprofit or our church or a school, well, we have to be very intentional about the investments we make in ourselves as a leader. And part of that is how we create our story. What are we feeding ourselves? Are we feeding ourselves with words of doubt or words of confidence? Are we feeding ourselves with words of fear or words and thoughts of courage? Are we seeing limitations because of COVID or are we seeing opportunities? What are we creating? Are we creating restrictions and say, well, I can't do that. I can't do that. Or are we creating, well, there's a million reasons that tell me why I can't do it, but I'm going to find the one that says I can't. Right? Well, actually, I'll go create the one that says I can. Because that's how we'll get that return. What kind of words do we feed ourselves with? What kind of thoughts? So those thoughts, Gandhi talked about our thoughts, become our words, become our actions, become our habits, become our character. And ultimately, those create results or a return. Well, that's a very good point, too, because I, I used to think that to be a good person, you had to give up everything. Um, so any profits that I made, I used to give away to help other people. Any um, time that I had, it would go to help other or the other people. And I started noticing that as good as my intentions were, um, other things started to suffer. And that there definitely has to be a fine line. Like you, you serve and you help where you can, but you define that. Um, and you don't overextend yourself because uh, if you don't build up your own foundation to be stable enough, then it in turn will uh, cause your foundation to crumble, right? If you're yeah. giving out blocks of your own foundation. Um, and that's why I've taken the approach that when I serve, I, um, to go into a parable, right? That uh, you teach per people to fish. You, you don't just give them the fish and that. And so I, I do is try to provide the tools and the resources and the ability to where I can. Um, and, and that's something that uh, has helped me to, to more effectively um, help them or help other people. And, that, and also identify the people that really do want to make the change. Because at the end of the day, you can't help everyone. You can't force anybody to change whatsoever. Um, all you can do is, again, provide them the tools, the resources, and then hope that their drive and their willingness to change or make a difference in their life is strong enough that they actually follow through. Yeah. One of the, the phrases that I very intentionally use um, and it's actually, uh, how I'll say it is my focus word, my focus phrase for 2021 is I will empower greatness. I will empower a story of greatness in myself. And then I will empower a story of greatness in others. Because um, empowering is not doing for. Empowering is helping someone to do, you know, teaching them to fish um, by one, but we'll teach you the skill. And then we'll teach you that uh, the confidence to actually go use the skill, you know, and we'll teach you some of the competence that goes along with it of where to use the skill that you have confidence to use. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when we empower ourselves and we empower others. That's where we get return on investment. 
uh, as a leader, a leader of ourself, a leader in our personal life, in our family, a leader in our professional life, in our business. That's very true. And I think that it, it is, um, it is really the, the fact that we, it, so that's an act of serving through just helping other people to, to, whether it's to fish or to help build up their business or whatever the case may be, which then does help you. Um, and at the same time, uh, I think you've done an excellent, your, your business is an excellent example of this, where you've built up your, your business to where, um, you can not only help people through interactions and that, but you can also um, cover your own needs through helping others and that. So your purpose provided a way or a means to create ROI, which then created your success. Yes. <clears throat> and it's an intentional process. It's a consistent process because sometimes I'm still going to live or allow to live in my thoughts that, that ugly truth, that I am invisible, that I'm not of great worth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forget my purpose, my why. But those moments are really minimal now in my life. Um, they show up very rarely. And when they do show up, they don't stick around very long because I've been very intentional and consistent uh, consistently creating this story of greatness, consistently acting on this story of greatness, consistently helping others create their story of greatness. And when we bring all of that together, when I do fall down or when we struggle feeling like we're an imposter, invisible or of no worth or feeling ugly, well, We've had a lot of consistent on the strong side. We've had a lot of consistent on the great side. Oh, that, that's good. Um, and, and consistency, and uh, I, I believe is is one of the honestly the most key elements. Um, so consistency and moderation, I would see, is is probably one of the the greatest keys to success. Um, cause it's easy to put a lot of force into something at first of that, and then expect some results. Um, but it doesn't, uh, it, so think of it as a metaphor is if you're on a bicycle, um, and you're trying to go up a hill, you can put a lot of force into one push and that, and you'll go up a little bit and then start rolling back down. Um, it, literally back down the hill is just as fast as you came mm -hmm. or went up not faster and so it's easy to say well that effort didn't really do me anything um, in fact it was actually counterproductive to make that effort and if you don't make enough effort then you just don't move at all you might stand still where you are but through consistent effort um, and stable effort and it, through mo moderation, right? You're not putting all your effort into it, but you're not putting too little um, that you are able to slowly bike up that hill. I like that. And then you're allowed to coast down a little bit, but you're consistently pedaling. And you yeah. know that even during the good times, if you just consistently pedal, the same speed, the same frequency, it may seem a lot easier, but when that next hill comes up, then um, even though it's struggling, but through that consistently, you're able to get through all those hills, all those obstacles and everything else. And the pedals is just like, as you were talking about the teeter totter or the, the give and take and so forth, right? That builds you up. You put all your effort on one pedal you know, because only one pedal is working really at any given time. The other one is in a stasis. Um, and that one's being helped and being served to help get to the position that it needs to be to help the other one when it needs to be. 
So when you put your weight on that pedal, now that one is serving and then the other one is serving. And so it's, this is just a continual cycle of serving each other and serving that need, whether that is a person or whether that is um, your, your purpose in general. Um, but it is through that cycle of consistency that we are able to accomplish great things like biking or create even completing a marathon, right? Um, the thought well, of a marathon is fast. For being a husband or a mother, wife, building yeah. a business, um, being a salesperson, any of those roles in life. Yep. Well, and it's easy to look at a marathon or a, a amazing marriage or anything else. Um, all is very, very hard tasks, right? And when you look at it as a whole, yes, it, it is hard. Um, but if you just break it down to where it's just two pedals, and you just need to get that mechanism working consistently through moderation that um, you're really able to accomplish it, your, your story of greatness, right? Exactly. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Les. Um, I, I want you to kind of go into any other, again, closing thoughts or, or maybe inspiration that you've had or something that you would really find would would benefit others that are trying to get through whatever struggles that they have this time. And then I would also like you to just get into where they can reach you at that point. Um, where, what can they, uh, where can they get some more information about you if they would like to, to get in contact with you? You betcha. You betcha. I'll leave a, a final thought that'll bring what we've talked about uh, today uh, together. Uh, with introducing a, a, a power of three and a promise. Uh, a power of three that, uh, that I have learned, uh, a power of three is a little strategy that I use to focus everything that I do in three core areas of life. Um, what matters most? What's in my control and influence? And what brings me love and joy? When we focus our efforts, what matters most, what's in my control and my influence, your control, your influence, and what is it you love and enjoy the most? When we use that as kind of an overarching guide for life, it will then become an overarching guide for everything we do in life, for all of our roles, for building this story of greatness. And if you could make a promise to yourself, if you could make a promise, promise to yourself to create whatever it is for you, like I promise to create a story of greatness. What is a promise that you could make? What is a promise that you could make that will help empower you to move forward, that would help empower you into greatness, into confidence, empower this great leader that you already are? When you make that kind of promise, then this is what will come true. And this is, uh, this is kind of my, this is my mantra. This is my mantra in life. The story that you most consistently create will be the story to most consistently come true in your life. Be very intentional and create a beautiful, a powerful and a wonderful story of love and greatness. So that's the final thought that I would share with you. And if you'd like to follow along with the thoughts that I, that I share and the conversations that I have, uh, find me on Facebook, Les Patterson. Best way to, to connect with me right there on Facebook. You can uh, join the Red Edge Mentoring Mastermind group on Facebook, it's a free group with lots of resources for leaders in any role of our life. And uh, Cameron, thank you. Thank you, this has really been an incredible conversation. Thank you for, uh, for the, uh, the invite and thank you for the greatness that you are doing, uh, the greatness that you are as a person and the incredible love that you put out into the world. 
Well, that, that's too kind of you. Um, <laughs> and our honor, especially coming from you. So uh, I, I, again, thank you for being on this podcast and uh, giving up your time um, to, to try to help others and to serve others and uh, and provide that value for other people. So you're most welcome, my friend. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining in on this podcast. Again, if you would like to reach out to Les, join his Facebook uh, group, either Les Patterson, um, or you can also look up Red Edge Mentoring. And uh, he has a personal Facebook group that you can join on there that uh, would allow you to network with other people with similar missions that are trying to better themselves, that are, that are trying to find that fulfillment in their life and that real happiness, right? Because all the success in the world doesn't mean much if you're, you're not fulfilled and happy through it. So definitely would uh, challenge you guys to, to at least do that. Um, it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't do anything. It's just being part of a great community of, of, of great people. So uh, thank you again, Les, and uh, have everyone have a blessed day. Thank you, my friends. I share my love with you.